Welcome back. This is part 21 of our top-down zombie shooter game. And in this video, we're going to uh, finish up with that shotgun item we added last time. And we're going to create a new visual effect for when the player gets damaged. So in the last video, we added a shotgun item for the player to upgrade to, but uh, we need a way to pick it up. So what we're going to do is I've gone over here and I've made the player start out with the pistol. So that's the, going to be the lowest weapon that you start with. And then in the settings, I've added a, uh, an item here to the item images for the shotgun. So we're going to use this image. And then in the effects sounds, I'm going to have a gun pickup sound that will play when we pick up that item. And the last piece of that puzzle is over here in our map, I've added an object here. Uh, just like the health pickup that we added over here named health, I've added a pickup here named, or an object called shotgun. That's going to be the shotgun pickup. All right, so now we just need to tell the game what to do with that item when it sees it. So in the, in the new, when we load the map, right now we're looking for health objects, but we're also going to look for shotgun objects. Okay, and it'll create an item of that type. So that's all we need to do for that. And so if we run the game, we will, we will see the shotgun item there uh, bouncing on the screen where it's supposed to be. Right. So now we need to just tell uh, the game what we want to happen when we run over that object to pick it up. And for that, we're going to go down here to our uh, item pickup code. And we have an if statement here saying if it was a health object, what to do. So we just need to say what to do if it's the shotgun. So if the hit type is shotgun, we're just going to, we're still going to delete the item because we want the item to disappear. Uh, for the effects sounds, we're going to play the uh, gun pickup sound. Right, uh, play. And we're going to just change the player's weapon to shotgun. And that should be all we need to do for that. So I'm shooting the pistol now. And if I go over here and pick up the shotgun, we hear the little click. And now I'm firing the shotgun. Uh, all good. Now the only other thing I wanted to do about the shotgun real quick was, if you notice when we fire it, uh, the bullets go out in this little like perfect arc because they're all traveling at the exact same speed. And to make it look a little bit more like a you know blast, I want to randomize just a little bit the speed of the bullets. So I'm just going to do that in uh, class bullet here where we set the velocity of the bullet, I'm going to just multiply it by a random number. And that random number, I'm going to make it between 0.9 and 1.1. So it's basically going to use the same speed we've been using and anywhere between 90 and 110% of that. So some of them will be a little faster, some of them will be a little slower. and so you can see what that looks like. If I'm firing the pistol, it's not going to be very noticeable, although some of the bullets will travel a little bit different speed. But if I go pick up the shotgun, I want to get that out of the way. So now you can see there's much more of a spread because some of the bullets move a little bit faster than others. If you can see that. Hopefully you can see it on your screen when you try it. And it just makes it much look much more like a random spray of bullets flying out of the shotgun. Okay, onto our new effect we want to do. So I want it to be apparent when the player gets hit. I just basically want the player sprite to flash red uh, briefly to show you got hit. And so that means what we're going to do is we're going to add a flag to the player. And um, so that flag will change to true when you get hit. 
And when the little flashing animation has stopped, it will change back to false. Um, so that way, the, this is how the uh, game will know whether to draw it uh, damaged or not. And so how we're gonna, gonna accomplish that effect is we're gonna take, we're just gonna define a quick uh, method here called hit. And being hit just changes damaged equal to true. And it's going to do something else, which I'll get to in a second. But what we want to do now is in the update when we're drawing the image, right? We, we calculated what rotated image the player needs to use. And then we're going to say um, if they're damaged, right? So if, the, if damaged is true, then we're going to make a copy. We're going to make, I'm going to make a copy of the image, of the player's image. And then what I want to do is I want to shade it uh, red. I want to paint it, paint red on top of it. But I don't want it to just be solid red. What I want is I want a pulsing effect. So it's a little bit red at, at first, gets a little bit redder, gets a little bit redder, and then um, gradually turns red. And that means we, we need some sort of sequence of alpha uh, amounts that we're going to paint the red on top of it. Remember, the alpha is how transparent a color is. So if I paint on top of the player with a red pixel, or I'm sorry, with a red color that has an alpha value of zero, you won't see it at all. It's fully transparent. And if I paint it with an alpha color that's 255, it'll be solid red. And so I want to, I want to sort of start at zero and ramp up to 255, right? So it gets darker and darker and darker. And, and we can pick what the steps are for how quickly that happens. But to do that, we need some sort of sequence of numbers that the alpha is going to change to. And we could do that with a variable, and we keep adding to the variable. But I wanted to show you a new uh, or another way to do it um, using, uh, using a really, really handy uh, Python library called ITERTOOLS. So I'll pop up a Python terminal here to show you. So the iter tools module is contains a lot of different uh, functions for dealing with iterators. And iterators are just anything that you want to um, iterate over. Iterate means do th do something one at a time. So for example, range five when we do for i and range five, right? Range five is an iterator. It produces the sequence of numbers from zero to four. And iter tools has lots of cool things for for doing iter for, for doing different kinds of iterators. So for example, um, I'm gonna import iter tools here and um, I'll show you one example which is the cycle. So if we make a cycle and let's say I just wanted one, two, three, four. So I have a list and I want to cycle through it. And what cycle does is it creates an infinite, basically an infinite iterator that will cycle through that um, through that list. So every time I say next C or in the next item in the cycle, I get the next one. But when I get to four, I go back to one. So I can just sit there over and over and over again. And I could even um, do this. You know, a whole bunch of times it'll just say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's all cool. That's a that cycle is a really useful one, uh, especially for animation and things like that. Uh, but the one that I want to use for this is called chain. Okay, and what chain does is it takes some sequence. We'll just use that one, two, three, four example again. Okay, it takes some sequ sequence and it makes it into an iterator just like that. So I can do the same thing and hit next C and it'll keep showing the next one in the sequence. However, when I get to the last one, it gives me back a stop iteration uh, exception to let you know you've reached the end of the chain. And the power of, of iter tools uh, chain is that you can chain multiple lists together. So if I had that list, and then I, I also had another list like, you know, like that, then um, 
let's go like this. Then what it's going to do is it's just going to chain those those together, right? The two lists became one big long chain until I reach the end. Okay, and this is how we're going to do our sequence of alpha values to ramp up from zero to two five five to give us that um, shading effect. So we're just going to make a list, and then the by making it a chain, we'll be able to know when it ends and when we reach the end that's how we need that's how we know we're done and we can stop um, and we can stop showing that effect we can set damage back to false okay and so we're going to create that by going over to our settings oops wrong window going over to our settings and the reason i'm going to do it this way is so that we can easily uh, change the effect and do a different effect when we want so in the effects, where's my effects section here? We're going to say what our damage alpha effect is. I'm going to call it damage alpha. And I just want this to be a sequence of values from 0 to 255. And so I could do a little loop here and say for i in range and append it to a list. Right? We've done that before when we wanted to make a list. We did something like, uh, just to give you an example, you know, I could do from zero to two five five, um, and use a step of say twenty five. Right, that would that would do this before, and we've done things like that before. I'm sure you've seen this before, going through a list and appending it, or going through a, a sequence and appending it to a list. But this is kind of wordy and takes a lot of space. Um, there's a, a shorter way to do it, a, a, a Python, um, a powerful thing that Python has called a list comprehension. And so I know I want a list at the end of this. And what I want is I want to do for whatever, i in range uh, 0, 2, 5, 5, 25. And I just want the list to be x for each of those. So Oops, sorry, x, i, for each of those. So this will produce that list. I'll show you in the example here. So if I say i for i in range 10, I get back a list with each of those i's from the loop, right? So it's just a shorthand way of saying the same thing, OK? And so this is going to give me the values from 0 to 255 in steps of about 25. And we can adjust this to say how quickly or slowly we want the transition to happen. Okay, So we have that damage alpha. And now on our sprite, we want to go and, and use that, turn that into a, um, turn that into a chain so that we can uh, measure as we, as we go through it. Okay, So what we're going to do is say, when you're damaged, Our damage alpha is going to equal a chain, which we have to import, of that sequence times two, because I want it to flash twice, flash, flash. Okay, so we'll go up here and from iter tools import chain. Okay, so now I have the damage alpha I want, and I just need to fill the image with that color. And actually, Take it back. We don't need to do this. This is an extra step we don't need. So what we want to do is we want to try filling it with that color. So we want to try self.image.fill. The color I want to use is red, 25500. 0, 0. And then the alpha value is just going to be the next in the uh, damage alpha. Right Now that might that will continue to be something until the cycle, or sorry, the chain runs out. Um, now, let me skip that for a second. So this will keep picking the next value, but eventually this is going to return, well, I shouldn't say an error, a, it's going to return an exception, right? The stop iteration exception because the chain has run out. So if that happens, we know we're done. So what we do if we get the exception is we just set damaged back to false. 
Okay, and now we're no longer damaged. We don't need to paint it anymore. Um, but the other thing I was going to add here is when you fill an image or you blit an image, uh, Pygame has some special uh, flags you can use. And it's a way to adjust how the image is blended. And you can see from the auto suggest here, there's a lot of different ones. Um, RGBA multiply is the one that's going to produce the best effect that we want. Although I recommend you try the other ones. You can see some of them will invert the colors and give you the, you know, the, the reversed video and things like that. But okay. So this is our, this is going to be our damage effect. If we're damaged, then keep trying to fill with the greater and greater values of alpha which it's going to go through twice. So it's going to get from light to dark and then from light to dark one more time, right? It's going to do it twice. And then if you, when you finish that chain of things, the damage effect is done. So damage goes back to false. Okay. So then we just need to go over here to our main and when the mob hits the player, if there's a hit, we're going to, um, we're going to tell the player to uh, do its hit effect. Right. Wait, wait, oh, parentheses. Um, okay, and let's see how that looks for us. There you go. So you can see, see the red effect. Now another thing you can do is you can you can try different colors. For example, uh, if you do two five five two five five white, then you're going to get the classic. Uh, Kind of just flashing effect right where the, the player blinks in and out and just to make that a little bit more obvious if you're watching on the video let's uh let's have it cycle through more times okay we'll try a couple different uh ways of doing this so you can see the effect differently right so you see how it's blinking four is i think a little bit too many but maybe three would be good um it's also going to depend on how fast you do it right? If we did steps of five, then there's a lot more val alpha values to go through. And that's not nearly going to look as good because it's going to be much more smooth, right? Yeah, you know, it's pulsing through there. Um, obviously not what you want, but for other things, that can be a really cool effect. Um, if you increase that number up, then you're going to have fewer steps along the way. So you'll have a really quick blink, which actually, now that I see that, I kind of like that too. So we're blinking four times, but we're doing it a lot faster. All right, I kind of like that now. All right, and now, you know, other than that, if you wanted to get fancy, you could go in here and use, instead of a, a, a linear progression from zero to 255, you could use one of those tween functions we've talked about before to adjust how it ramps up from 0 to 255. Um, in this particular case where we're flashing uh, the image really fast, you're not really going to see any difference in the linear versus the sine um, or any of those because it happens so fast. But if you were to do that fade in, fade out effect we saw, uh, you could get a really nice um, and different looking effect by using a different, uh, a different tween function here when you generate your sequence of, of alphas. All right, so that will do it for this video. Uh, if you want, you could go and add the same effect to the mobs when you shoot them and have them flash. Uh, they could blink or they could flash white, or you could even uh, have them flash green since we're using this nice goopy green color for their blood. Uh, as always, please go ahead and like and subscribe so that you'll get the next video. And I will see you next time. Thanks, everyone.